while we may not be in the sanctuary. We are very much connected by your Holy Spirit. So we pray, God, wherever the members or wherever the body of Christ is gathered, that you, God, are in the midst. So, God, we pray that you would receive this worship. Where holy hands are lifted, we pray that you would touch hearts. Where voices are raised, we pray that you would strengthen the lungs who give you praise. God, where feet are standing on hollow ground, let everyone know that their house is a house of worship. God, you gave us everything that we have. All that we have belongs to you. So because you've been that kind, we just want to come together this morning and lift you up. Lift you up in our home, in our hearts, with our hands. We want to say hallelujah. Thank you, God, for being the wonderful, loving God that you are. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray and ask it all. Every believer said amen, amen, and amen. Listen. It's another Sunday morning that we're gathered together in sight of worship. So I don't want you to miss the opportunity to give God praise where you are. I want you to touch that light. I want you to touch that heart. I want you to touch that share button. Listen, if there's somebody in your Facebook community that you believe needs to hear a word from the Lord right now, I want you to share this worship with your friend, your co-worker, your family member. I want you to text them, have somebody else call them. Don't you miss today, because you might miss what God has for you. But have somebody else who's close to you, you go ahead and text them while I keep my phone on this line. And have somebody communicate with you. You all can say amen together. And you'll find yourself communicating in worship. Worshiping God is one of the purest and best forms of praise that you will ever find yourself doing. Take this day and give them your pure praise. Amen. We're glad to have you. And please, worship with us. Sing the songs. Hearts, like and share. Worship. Come on, let's hear our choir.
COVID-19. We are praying for healing for all of those who are in hospitals. We're praying for healing for all of those who are under 14-day four, uh, quarantine. Say it loud with me. I am healed and believe for someone that you know and someone that you love. Hallelujah, I am healed. Listen, God is still in the healing business. He is still setting captives free, and he can still deliver us from this dreadful disease. Well, this morning, before we move uh, closer to this moment where we'll give you the word of God, we need to go over together from the Holy Writ. So I want you, if you don't mind, to turn your Bibles again to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 3. Beginning with verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 3. Beginning with verse 8. I want you to go and grab your Bibles or Grab your iPads, grab your tablets, or your phones, or just grab your whole paperback or hardback Word of God. First Peter, chapter 3, beginning with verse 8. I will only be going through verses 8 and 9, but I'm going to read for our hearing the verse. First Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 8, and it reads on this wise. From the NIV, finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Our Father and our God, for the time that is ours to share, I want you to help us to focus on this word this morning. I want you to help us to understand, God, that we have to learn how to be humble and compassionate how to love one another, we have to learn, God, how to show humility, how to be sympathetic in the body of Christ, and not just for one believer, but for all believers. And you are helping us to do this so that we can learn how to get away with the blessing. For God, Lord, me into the well of your anointing to speak the mysteries of this great gospel which I am a change. And I'll be faithful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. For it is in the unmatched name of Jesus Christ we do pray and ask it all. And every believer said, Amen. Listen, I want you to look at someone. We've already prayed, but I want you to know why I'm praying. Because I'm praying right now that each of you will learn the topic of this message. How to get away with a blessing. Come on, touch yourself and say it real loud. How to get away with a blessing. Peter wants to show us and God wants you to know how to get away with a blessing. Come on, quiet.
entertainment, of course, purposes, how to get away with many unfortunate, incredible, unbelievable, and oftentimes illegal acts. But today, I want to engage you for just a moment from 1 Peter chapter 3 on a passage that will encourage you on how to bless others and how you can get away with a blessing. Uh, the idea of getting away with something literally assumes that there has to be some plotting and some planning. It implies that someone has to be the victim and someone has to be victorious. Let me suggest at the outset this morning that Peter is putting forth an option for us where the victim is victorious and the previous sinner has been saved and is on the path to salvation. It's a win-win situation. But I want you to remember that situations do not come without conflict, discomfort, and decisions. Let me say that again. Situations do not come without conflict, discomfort, and decisions. When Peter writes finally in verse 8, he is connecting you and I with what we need to know from the previous point in the plan that will move us forward. Peter addresses the issue of faith and family. In verses 1 through 6, he addresses the wife and her strength. He speaks to her ability to demonstrate her beauty and the presence and power of God that she is able to demonstrate that the wife can win the husband over to become a believer in the word of God. Somebody ought to shout real loud right now. That gives a new meaning to her beauty becomes her. Peter is not writing about the tone of her skin or the texture of her femininity or her exterior, but rather the tempered tenderness that God has developed in her heart. Peter talks about her in such a way that we find that the woman is a profound gift to man. And then, ladies, Peter addresses the men in verse 7. He says to treat your wives with a little R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Y'all talk to me now. Be considerate to them and of them because you are partners and heirs in the gracious gift of Jesus Christ. Men are warned not to hinder our prayers. Now here we come to verse 8 when Peter takes a, this universal term to become inclusive of not only husbands and wives, but all of us that make up the family of faith. When he says, all of you, he reaches out to those that are the born again believers, those of us who are a part of the body of Christ that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Let me tell you this morning how you can get away with a blessing. Listen, it is the first thing that the text won't teach us is it is a Christian community caper. He says, finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Listen, listen, listen to that again. It is a Christian community caper. Come on, come on, Christians. It's a Christian community came from. He says, finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. These are the participants and the key components in the plan that God has for us. If you want to get away with the blessing, Peter says to those of us that are not like everyone else because we have been called out, we have been set apart because we are in fact holy, as the people of God desiring a blessing, Peter lays out five points in this first scripture, verse 8. First, he says, be like-minded. Listen, you should not be divided when you're sitting in the same church on the same pew by someone listening to the same pastor. He says to us that we should be like-minded. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, he says, I appeal to you, Paul says this, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another.
another. In what you say, and that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Listen, if you and I are going to be the children of God that we have been called to be, we cannot be divided in this work of faith. Somebody said we got to be together, we got to be like minded. Secondly, he says in the text that we got to be sympathetic. Show some feelings for your brothers and sisters. Show some feelings towards one another. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26, it says this. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Listen, listen. You have to have sympathy with your brothers and sisters in Christ. If your brother is happy, your sister is happy, you be happy with them. If your brother is happy, your sister is happy, you be happy with them. But if they cry, you ought to have some sympathy for them. Come on, somebody. So, so listen, we ought to be like-minded and we ought to have some sympathy. Then he says, in this five piece, we all love one another. It means just that. Love one another. I'm going back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for one another, love one another deeply from the heart. Listen, your, your, your love shouldn't be like a knockoff purse. Your love shouldn't be like a knockoff pair of jeans. Your love should be genuine, and it should come straight from your heart. You should love your fellow man. God wants us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Listen, if you care for yourself, and I pray that you do, you ought to care for those that you enter into the household of faith with. Mm. Love one another. Then he says, be compassionate. Mm. I used to wonder why people would say every now and again, have mercy. Somebody ought to say that real loud. Just say, have mercy. Don't hold grudges towards one another. Have mercy on one another. Ephesians 4 and 32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Be compassionate. If, if, if Jesus had uh, not said, not my will, but thy will be done, we would not have this opportunity. But he had compassion on us. He was kind towards us. He had mercy on us. Have mercy on those who don't necessarily treat you the way that you want to be treated. Be compassionate towards your neighbor. Then fifthly he says, and this is the big one right here, be humble. Be humble. Don't think so much of yourself and so little of others. Romans 12, uh, 16 says this, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but willing to associate with people of low position. And do not be conceited. Can I tell you something? As much education as you have, as good as you look, and, 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 and as, as good of a wardrobe as you have, that this might hurt your feelings, at the end of the day, you are not all that in a bag of chips. If you get sick, you go to the hospital just like another person. If you lose your job, you will lose stuff just like another person. And Big Mama used to tell me, don't be so haughty on your way up because you'll be humble on your way down. Be humble in the body of Christ. As the body of Christ, the Christian community, uh, Peter is trying to help us to train and strengthen ourselves for the blockage that will come to our blessings. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier that whenever we deal with situations, we would always encounter conflict, discomfort, and decisions. But Pastor, you said it would be a win-win situation. It don't sound like we're going to win. I told you this was a Christian kingdom. It's not only constructed for you to receive a blessing, but, but my brothers and sisters, you have to be a blessing. Somebody said that out loud. I have to be a blessing. The Lord wants us to get our mind right. He wants us to have sympathy for others. He wants us to love our brothers and our enemies. He wants us to love our enemies. He wants us to come with compassion, and he wants us to have humility because on your way to your blessings, you're going to have to make it through. Watch this. Operation, I have to 
bless somebody else. Second point of this, this lesson is that you're going to have to learn how to bless somebody else. Text tells us in verse 9, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. But on the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Listen, I want you to know this. There's going to be a barricade to your blessing. Say this out loud. There is a barricade to my blessing. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. Uh, the reason why you and I had to spend time getting our mind right, getting the mind of Christ, and, and getting our sympathy in order, and, and getting some love and humility inside of us, and some compassion in us, is because God knew someone was going to be evil to you, evil to me. God knew someone was going to insult you and I. God knew somebody was going to test you and I. And the new you that we talked about last week that has the new birth is not allowed to do what the old you would have done if you hadn't been confronted by that stuff in your past. You can't say the same four-letter words you used to say. Y'all gonna talk to me. You can't cuss them like the YouTube. You got to cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You can't block and plan and set traps and snares. No, you can't do that. You have to seek the Lord while he may be found and call on his name while he is yet near. You have to know that he is still God. It is he that has made you and not you yourself. He's in charge of everything that's going on in your life. And like the children of Israel, you got to stand still even when it gets hard sometimes, call on the name of Jesus and see the salvation of the Lord in your life. Well, Pastor, does that mean I got to just keep doing nothing? No, it doesn't mean you do nothing. You still read God's word. You still fast. You still pray. You still meditate. But can I tell you something? You still got to let God be God. You don't get evil. You don't get so angry that you get messed up. You don't go insults because they insulted you. Don't get blocked out. You get ready to step in. You got to be a blessing. Watch this. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Somebody say, you be a blessing. Say that again. You be a blessing. Because on the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called. And I know you don't like it. But child of God, you were called to be a blessing. God called you to bless somebody. God called you to help somebody who don't want you to help them. God called you to bless somebody that's been a pain in your backside. God called you to be a blessing. So listen to this. I ain't going to hold you long. When they plan against you, you just turn around and bless them. When they can't stand, you see you coming. You just turn around and bless them. When they start calling you or speaking all manner of evil against you, you just turn around and bless them. When they think that they know more than you do, you just turn around and bless them. I like that song. I started to think of it in a different way. Every time I turn around, blessings, 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 because if you really read the text, it might be the folks that's messing up that really seem to get more blessings because it's the people of God do what God called them to do every time you turn around, there will be some blessings because sometimes they feel like there's more haters than there are holy folks. But sometimes the reason why we are holy is because we're blessing our haters every time we turn around, blessings. And here it is. Here it is. God blessed you with more of the mind of Christ because he needed your mind to be right when they were talking about you. God gave you more sympathy because he needed you to show sympathy when they were scandalizing your name. He placed more love in your heart because he needed you to show love when nobody was loving you like you wanted to be loved. He gave you more compassion because the very one that needed your help, when you could have turned your back on him, he needed you to show them what it meant to be a child of God. And he made you more humble because sometimes you got to get past yourself to help somebody because even those who do wrong need to know that God is still working on their behalf. So that you wouldn't get blocked out of your blessing. But look at this. He called you 
to this Christian caper. I call it a caper because it looks like he's planning this thing in advance. And I say, uh, you said, Pastor, uh, I was going to encounter some conflict. You said, Pastor, I was going to encounter some discomfort as a child of God. Can I tell you something? I'm glad that you made it through the conflict, and I'm glad you made it through the uh, discomfort. Because if you're still here, if you're helping your enemies, that means that you made the right decision. Final part of that text says this, so that you may inherit a blessing. When I read that text, it seemed kind of awkward that I had to go through conflict and discomfort just to get a blessing. So I looked at that word, eulago, and that word, it kind of looks like eulogy. But that word means blessing. It's what happens in the end of your situation. Y'all ain't hearing me. Can I talk to somebody here this morning? We won't always get our accolades at the beginning. They won't always recognize you when you want them to. Sometimes your blessings happen after the conflict. Sometimes your blessings happen after you've been discomforted. Sometimes your blessings happen after you've been talked about. But when you make the right decision, you ought to tell yourself you will get away with the blessing. Y'all ain't hear me this morning. When you go through the struggle, sometimes it's just so you can get saved. I'm out your way when I tell you this. There's a story called The Son. It's about a wealthy man and his son. They both love to collect rare artworks. They had everything in their collection from Picasso to Raphael. They would often sit together and admire the great works of the art. And when the Vietnam conflict broke out, the son was drafted into the war. He was a very strong and courageous young man. He died in the war out there trying to save somebody's life. The father was notified and grieved deeply about his son. And about a month later, just before Christmas, there was a knock at the door of the father. A young man who was a soldier with his son came with a package in his arm. He said, sir, I know you don't know me, but the soldier for whom you know your son to be, he saved my life. He saved me one day, picked me up and carried me and took a shot in his heart. He died instantly. And I don't know if it'll make you feel better, Pops, but he didn't suffer not one bit. And I know that you love art, so I came with this picture. Now, I'm not a great artist, but I want to give you this picture. And the father tried to pay him for the picture, but the father, the son said, excuse me, the young man said, no, I can't take no money. I can never repay you for what your son did for me. When the father opened up the picture, it was a portrait of his son. And the eyes looked so genuine that the father began to tear up. He moved the Picasso out of the way. He moved the Van Gogh out of the way. And right over the mantle of his fireplace, he put a picture of his son. Somebody ought to say, yeah. And every time friends came to the house, he didn't show him the Picasso first. He didn't show him the Raphael first. He didn't show him the Van Gogh first. But he showed a picture of his son. Well, a few months later, the man died. Somebody said he died of a broken heart. But he died in the time of the Lord's planning. But when he died, the auctioneer got the letter and said, Sir, I need you to auction off my estate. And I want you to start with this picture. So on the day of the auction, the auctioneer had the picture of the sun on the mantle. People moved from across the country to look at all of the great art that he had. But the first picture that he started the auction was a picture of the sun. And he said the auction opens up on this picture of the sun. So got man started cussing. We didn't come to see that. We came for all of the good art. But the auction just said, can I get somebody to auction 100? Can I get somebody to auction 200? And another voice said angrily, we came for the red gold. We came for the 
and they talked about Jesus. They talked about Paul. And I want you to know that they will talk about Jesus. But don't repay evil for evil. Don't repay insults for insults. Just keep repaying evil with blessings. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Is there one? If there is one in this worship today, I want you to type into that box. My life belongs to Jesus Christ. I give him my heart, my mind, my soul, my very being. And when you do it, don't just type it. Believe me. Trust him. Then I want you to send a message to us at the Bird Baptist Church Stewardship. Let us meet with you on a Zoom. We can talk on the phone. I will lead you personally. You will have a personal Savior in Jesus Christ, and you will have a personal pastor in Clarence Hampton. You will have a people, an August body, that will pray with you, that will laugh with you, sing with you, and cry with you. And the members of the First Baptist Church of Stewardship. God, we thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you, God, for teaching us that there is a way to get away with a blessing. It's keeping our trust in you. And if there is one that gave his life, God, we pray that you would cover them in your blood. We pray that you would send ministering angels to cover them until we're able to meet again. God, we trust that we love you. We place our love before you. We think you have your way in our lives. Manifest yourself in the earth. And even in this time of worship, Jesus name. Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Good morning, stewardship family. I'm coming to you this morning with our announcement, and they are as follows. I pray that everyone is doing well this morning. First of all, we want to let you know that we are preparing for our return. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Leadership will be meeting soon and discussing pertinent information in reference to this. So keep your cell phones open, your house phones, your text message. You're not sure how the information is going to come through, but let us be prayerful about this return. We will be returning soon. Don't forget to join us each Sunday morning in our Sunday school. We are on the conference call. You can dial in at 712-770-4700. The access code is 240585. Again, that's 712 770 4700. And the access code is 240585. Next week's lesson is Repent of Justice. We will be coming from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 22. Verses 1 through 10. That's Jeremiah 22, verses 1 through 10. We look forward to seeing you there. If for some reason you are not able to join us at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings, we are still in Bible study each Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. Please listen for a text message or information coming from Pastor Hampton or myself. A link will be sent out Uh, between 6 and 6.15 each Tuesday evening with a link to join the Zoom Bible study. We look forward to seeing you in that activity as well at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday evenings. Our worship service each Sunday morning, 9.07 a.m. via Facebook. If you miss the 9.07 viewing, then it's posted again around 1.07 via uh, YouTube. That information usually comes out in a link as well. So we're still finding ways and means to reach our brothers and sisters and also get forth the word of God. Want to say happy birthday to those who are celebrating during the month of May. A couple of belated birthdays. 
May 8th to Sister Christine Royal, and May 10th, last Sunday, Mother's Day to Sister Santina Miller. Upcoming birthday, May 23rd to Sister Brianna Hamilton. Graduations during the month of March, Jayla Simmons graduated from the Empire Cosmetology School. We want to say congratulations to Jayla Gresham. And Zachariah Hill is our only high school graduate this year. Zachariah will be graduating from Charles Drew High School in Clayton County. Graduation services have been tentatively set for June 27th. More details will be provided as uh, plans are being completed. Also want to congratulate Christy Moore, who has received her Juris Doctorate degree from the Walter F. George School of Law at Mercer University. Graduation services are tentatively planned for August 7th. We are not sure if that will be a full um, an activity that we can attend or it will be a virtual graduation. But want to say congratulations, congratulations to all of these graduates. God is still blessing the youth of the First Baptist Church of Stewardship. Congratulations to the proud parents as well. We want to keep in mind all of our, our sick and shut-in members, those who may be experiencing um, problems or having procedures or whatever during the week. Let us just keep each other lifted in prayer each and every day. Remember, God has not forsaken us. He has not left us alone. So let us continue to trust him and obey his word. These are our announcements for the week. Please govern yourselves accordingly and let us continue to keep each and every one uplifted in prayer. Thank you. It's offering time. Listen, you have one of the richest opportunities of your life right now. How? Because what sort of a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You are sowing into rich soil so that your life may be blessed. And not just for the financial side, but for the faithful side. We are obedient in our giving. We are disciplined in our giving so that God sees our obedience and discipline and he rewards us accordingly. We are supposed to bring our tithes into the storehouse. This is to be faithful members of stewardship and to all of those who are viewing us on Facebook Live. You have to sow in order to reap a harvest. You can't be selfish because when you sow selfishly, you reap selfishly. God controls every area of our lives. And so now is the time for us to be unselfish, faithful, disciplined givers. You are to bring a time, 10% of what God blesses you with. And in doing so, God sees your faithfulness, he sees your discipline, he sees your obedience, and God loves a cheerful giver. Listen, I want you right now to open up those apps, to pull out your checkbook, pull out those envelopes if you're going to mail it to 332 Big River Home South East Atlanta, Georgia. 30354. Go to your email or your PayPal app. Go to the First Baptist Church of Stewardship. That's ownership. Ownership 2000 at gmail.com. Still 332 Griffin. Or Givelify. On Givelify, we are the First Baptist Church of Stewardship. 332 Griffin Road, Southeast, Atlanta, Georgia, 30354. Give, and it will come back to you. Good then. Press down, shake it together. Will be poured into your lap. Men are going to literally pour into your book. Be blessed through your giving. Amen. We're certainly grateful to have had you in this worship experience today. We pray that God was able to touch your heart. We know it's not us, but we're glad to be used by the Christ to minister a word, a song, a prayer, and a preached word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we pray, minister to your heart. Pray that God is keeping you from Sunday to Sunday. If you're able to meet us on Sunday morning in our Sunday school, please meet us. Those announcements are coming. If you're able to meet us on our Bible study, Tuesday at 6.30, please meet us. 
on our Zoom call. We're having a wonderful time. But if you cannot, we're praying now for your safety. We're praying for your health. And we're praying for your faith to increase. Let us bow. God, we pray for all of those who have met us in worship. We pray for those who had the desire. We pray for all the members of stewardship and for all those who have become the members of faith through this worship experience online. We pray, God, that you are covering our seniors, our parents, our students, our young babies. God, we understand that for the seniors, they once were young, but now they're old. Yet have they never seen the rights of faith or see they free. And God, for all those that follow us, you're still the keeper and have been keeping us all the days of our lives. And so as we prepare to leave this place but help your presence, we ask you, God, to cover the essential work. We ask you, God, to cover those who labor in grocery stores, hospitals, nurses, doctors, but all those who are still working in shops, keep automotives running, whatever they do, God, that you would keep your good hand of mercy upon them. Pray, God, for pastors and leaders of every congregation around this world. I pray, God, that when you bring us back into the household of faith, there will be such energy in ministry that the community will outgrow the enemy. Now, God, would you continue to allow your good hand of mercy to keep us? May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us. May he be gracious with us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. And may his presence be ever faithful upon us.